Hello, in this video we're going to be looking at the idea of nesting conditional proofs. And what this means is to nest one assumption within another. So first we make an assumption, then we make another assumption, we might make a third, and so on. You're currently watching For the Love of Wisdom, a YouTube channel on free thought, philosophy, and critical thinking. Besides videos on logic, there are also videos on happiness, on religion, on ethics, and on science. This video is part of a series of videos on symbolic logic. Here's an overview of the previous videos in case you need to go back and catch up before continuing with this video. So the, verse, the first video was on what makes an argument a good one. And one of the important ideas we got from this is the idea that a good deductive argument should be valid. That is, the premises should entail the conclusion. And then we're, we went on to look at rules of deductive logic, uh, forms of arguments in which the premises entail the conclusion. So we covered the rules of inference, and then we moved on to the rules of replacement. Then we started doing proofs. First with the rules of inference, and we looked at some solutions to those. And then we moved on to conditional proof, where we were also using the rules of replacement. And conditional proof is a technique for proving a conditional by making an assumption. And then trying to show that that assumption leads to something, and that allows us to conclude if our original assumption, then what we derived Okay, then we have solutions to the conditional proof homework. And the last video was on the rules of inference for biconditionals. And it looks like that's getting cut off a bit here. Okay. So in this video, we're going to prove the rule of exportation. This is one of our rules of replacement. And we're going to do some conditional proofs to prove this. So here's what the rule of exportation says. If P and Q then R is materially equivalent to if P then if Q then R. Okay, so how can we prove this? Well, we're going to start by assuming uh, what we have on the left side here and trying to get what we have on the right side. And then we'll go the other way, assuming what we have on the right side and trying to get what we have on the left. Okay, so our first step is to assume if P and Q, then R. So, because we're trying to get the conditional if P and Q, then R, then if P, then if Q, then R. And now what we want to try to do is get the conditional if P, then if Q, then R. And that itself is a conditional, so we can use conditional proof to get that. So within the conditional proof that we've already started, we're making a second assumption. And that second assumption is nested within the first assumption. So it has a scope of its own that is narrower than the scope of the outer assumption. And this works sort of like scopes in programming languages. Uh, you can have variables that are local versus variables that are global, and local variables can have narrower, narrower scope than other local variables. So if you run a function using a local variable and that function runs itself and so on repeatedly, you may have multiple instances of the same variable with narrower and narrower scopes. So that's what we're doing here. This assumption creates a narrower scope than the assumption that we first started with. So we're assuming P. And now we want to prove if Q then R. That's another conditional, so we can use another conditional proof to prove that. So now we have three assumptions, and that's as deep as this is going to go in this proof. So we have three nested conditional proofs. And now we're trying to get R. Well, from lines 2 and 3, we can 
use conjunction to get P and Q. And then because we have P and Q, then R, we can get R. And we get R through modus ponens. And now we can close off the innermost assumption. And we get if Q, then R by conditional proof. And now we can close off the assumption, um, the second assumption. And we get if P, then if Q, then R from lines 2 through 6, conditional proof. And then we can close off our outermost assumption, and we can get if P and Q, then R, then if P, then if Q, then R. And now we can just go in the other direction. We're going to start by assuming if P, then if Q, then R. And what we want to get is if P and Q, then R. All right. So we as, we're now assuming P and Q. And we want to get R. Well, you can see we have R up here on line 5. Could we use that? No, we can't. And that's because the scope that it appears in has been closed. So that's not accessible to us. You have to remember when you close a scope, what, whatever lines were in that scope are no longer accessible to you. So here's what we're going to do. On line 11, we simplify P and Q. And now we have P. And we can use P to get if Q, then R. So we do that on line 12 through modus ponens. And then we simplify line 10 again, and we get Q which will let us use modus ponens again to get R. And now we can close off this conditional proof and we get P and Q, then R. If P and Q, then R. From lines 10 through 14 conditional proof. And we've just closed off the inner conditional proof. There, we're still in the other conditional proof. And now we close off that and we get if P then if Q, then R, then if P and Q, then R. And so now we have the two conditionals that we need to form a biconditional. And we're going to use biconditional introduction, which we learned about in the previous video. And we get if P and Q, then R is a materially equivalent to if P, then if Q, then R. And I've probably mentioned before, and I'll mention again, this has applications in computer programming. You can have a bunch of conditions all together, end it all together, or you could say if this, then if this, then if that. And they're going to be equivalent to each other. Okay, in the next video, we're going to try to prove the disjunctive forms of commutation and association. And we're going to be doing that in a video called Proving Disjunctions with Conditional Proof. Thank you for watching and look for the next video. Also, check below. Uh, there will be a link to the blog page for this video, which goes over to some of the same material. And will also give you access to the blog pages about other videos in this series.